Welcome back. You might say that uh, my previous guest is gone and we have got a new guest. Uh, she is Phyllis Oljan. She is the director of the theatre that we were talking about, Bon Bibi or Daughter of Forest. She is also a founding member of Kamala Collective. She has been directing uh, plays and, uh, shall I say, documentary films <laughs> uh, for some time, since 2008, she said. And uh, she has worked with the South Bank Center. She is a member of the Royal Arts uh, Platform Artist Advisory Group. Her recent productions include Birangola, One Bibi, The Cost of Living, Indexed Linked, <laughs> <laughs> Animal Farm, uh, Salty Waters and Us, you are always with me. Right. You have also worked with uh, Jatinda Verma, yeah. Sue Moffat, Philip Parr, and Oliver Jones. Mm -hmm. Right, Phyllis, uh, what started the journey, yours, into the world of theatre, and how did you become a director? Very briefly. Yeah, I mean, uh, as, as, as a very young person, since I was a child, I loved stories. And I loved creating stories on my own. I had imaginary friends, mm -hmm. and I went on a, lots of adventure. Mo most children have imaginary friends. <laughs> yes, they do. But I really loved the fact that so I was in control of those journeys, and I could change things and, you know, create a moment. And so I think what happened was I came to a point in my life at university um, where I had to make a choice on what to do. And I kept changing between drama and I wanted to become a doctor and I wanted to become, go into the media world, um, you know, I wanted to become a, um, a teacher and it came to a point where I was just like, how can I put all those jobs in one job? And I thought, become a director so I can actually engross myself in all those roles. Uh, how, how, how did you, when was the initiation? How did you get into your first job as a director or a director's assistant? Um, so what happened was, again, um, that's how we met with Lisa. I started working for Tara, and I ran their youth theatre group called Arts Beat. So I started doing Shakespeare plays with young people. We started off with 10 minutes, which <coughs> increased into half an hour. And then I started working on my play, which was called All for Honour, uh, mm. which basically had the opportunity to re do a research and development process at Tara, uh, Tara Arts, um, which is now going to be Tara Theatre. And it's been fantastic. So that kind of started, started my career as a director. And then I met Jatinda, and I met McCall. And then that one thing led to another. And then I started working at the Nubik Theatre. And so it all started with that. The opportunity to work in that organization really opened up lots of doors for me. Have you thought of going into films? Oh, yes. I mean, I've recently been really fascinated by editing and, um, yeah, I've been really interested in that. And because at the moment we're working on Rising Silence and Lisa's directing it, I've had the opportunity to actually meet some incredible um, um, film um, cinematographers and, and, uh, and it's been a fascinating process for me just to kind of see it in a different way. Uh, you are directing this Daughter of Forest. Yes. Uh, uh, a couple of years ago, I think I, I watched uh, Born Bibi, mm -hmm. uh, which makes, was that uh, your good job? Yes, so you watched so it with the shadow puppets yes. and, and uh, the tiger so puppets. So this daughter of Forrest and the Born Bibi, mm -hmm. she has adopted an ang anglicized name now, uh, Born Bibi. Uh, what is different between the two plays? What is the difference? Yeah, I, I think what happened with our research and development, I was fascinated by the story of Born Bibi. And um, the main reason was that, um, you know, you'd never hear that, you know, Allah, you know, chose a, a girl or a woman to go on a journey, like a quest, to solve this problem, which is to save the forest from a demon tiger. It's just a story. But, but it's fantastic. It's rare to actually to tap into a character like that, especially, you know, from... I come from a Muslim background as well, and it was the first time that I heard a story of a, of a woman, you know, chosen by Allah. It's a, it's a big thing. It's a big thing. So I thought, this is fascinating. And also the fact that Dokken Rai is a, <coughs> a bad character. It's a Brahmin sage. Mm -hmm. You know, people are exploiting the forest. He has to transform himself in order to protect the forest that he loves. So I think that really, really fascinated me. So I think the, the, the research and development process was just to work on that and look at the village life in Schunderbrunn's. After that, we were discussing about how 
how we, where, where we want to take this piece. And there was lots of you know, um, things that we wanted to incorporate in it. And actually, the daughter of the forest, Bombibi is the daughter of the forest. And yeah. all the people, all the girls, the women who are living in the forest, they are the daughter of the forest because they are, in a way, you know, making a living. You know, the forest is providing them like how a mother would provide for a right. child. So right. I think it was a, it was a, a fantastic way. It's, it's, of it's it mother, mother nature. Mother nature, and it's a fantastic way of bringing all those things together because this play is not just about Bombibi. You know, it's about a young girl who loses her brother. Um, to the forest, and it, it's about her journey. And As her I'm discovery. telling Lisa that uh, she's like Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're, we're always interested in, in, in the forest, and, and you know, and it's, it's quite dark, and it's also quite interesting, and you don't know the creatures that are going to come and, and you know, kind of walk, can walk past your pathway. And Shundarbon, the mangrove forest, is an, such an interesting um, forest because there's incredible wildlife, you know, and I think, yeah, it's, it's really magical, really magical. Uh, this daughter of forest, have you used uh, new props, new lights, uh, oh, new kind of music? This is so exciting for us. I mean, we've put it together and uh, we've, we've just done four shows. Um, there's so much. I mean, it's um, 55 minutes to an hour show and originally we only had it for 30 minutes. So there's lots of, um, uh, lots of physical theatre. There's, um, um, you know, Kyo has actually produced um, and, and composed the music. So just absolutely delicious music. Um, and we have um, shadow puppetry, but done in a completely different way than the one you watched because the shadow puppets are coming out from the trees. Everything is fo focused on the trees and the forest, so the whole story kind of emerges from that, the landscape, because I think that's what's so magical about this place. Uh, how many characters uh, and actors you have employed? So we have five actors mm -hmm. um, and three playing the ensemble, and they're the puppeteers, and they do everything on that stage. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating to see how they can quickly respond to those quick changes and become the tiger and do the shadow puppetry and then become the forest. So it's, it's fantastic. It's a really exciting piece of work and I'm really proud of it. Now, where do you go from here? Well, I do hope that um, at the moment we're touring, I do hope that this piece um, will have legs to tour um, you know, globally. I hope we can take it um, abroad because I think it's such an important, crucial piece of work and I think it needs to be told in s and, and it's told in a fun, dynamic way. And I think you know, the young people who came to see it, they're taking so much away from it because there's a lot that um, we're giving an offering. Not only are we exploring about the most amazing forests in Bangladesh, which a lot of those young people who come to see the show wouldn't have known about, but it's also about, you know, about us not cons consuming more than we need, because at the moment we're living um, in a capitalist society where we're always wanting more than we need. We're always wanting for the next new phone, the TV, yeah. and, and yeah. actually it's got such and a And all these gadgets are, are, are disturbing the, the, the balance. Well, you, you're taking all the natural resources out of the environment and, you know, there's going to be, there's, I mean, there is coming to a point where the, where the environment is going, enough is enough. That's why in the last five years or six years what we're doing is we're recycling. We never used to do that, and no. now we're doing it because we're actually seeing that the environment, we're exhausting it so much that it can't Yeah, we have come to a situation where it has to be done. Yes, or else, you know, um, you know, there, you know, we're going to be extinct at some point because, you know, um, things are going to be, we're, we're just consuming too much and not giving enough back to the environment, and that's what's so beautiful about this play. It's about, you, you're, you, if you take something, you have to leave something behind, and through our research, what we discovered is that the woodcutters, for instance, don't chop the strong branches, they chop the yeah. weak ones, right. so that the strong ones can give more life. And I think that is such a beautiful thing, you know. The villages of that, f of, of Shundarban Forest, understand this, 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 you know, uh, land so well, and yet we're living in such luxury and, and we've got so much um, we s still don't seem to understand the environment that... Yeah, but aren't we demanding too much from those poor villagers because they have got to live a life? How do you mean, like, demand? 
I mean, we expect them that uh, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this for the sake of nature. See. Yeah, and I and don't think it's about the sake of nature. I think it's instinctive for the mm. villagers. It's mm. not. I think there are. Um, how can I say there are a, a bureaucracy around it? Um, there's a lot of uh, legislation which pr prevents them, you know, fishing and and entering certain areas of Shundarbans. But I think they have a deep understanding of the forest and the fact that if you um, if you if you take the weak branches, leave the strong ones, then the Shundarbans forest is going to provide you more, and you can come back and pr and and take mm. the the weak mm -hmm. ones, and you know. So it's that thing of like, you know. If I respect this land, the land will provide for me rather than I'm going to take as much as I can, sell it off and come back and keep taking. And actually, this is such a beautiful way of, of understanding the balance but and the need. But that is what is happening uh, I I around such World Heritage sites, mm. because the same thing is happening in Vietnam. Mm. Uh, the animal population has gone down because yes. there's not enough forests see, mm. and enough uh, food for the animals to see. Yeah, I think, I think what's at risk is at the moment is climate change and there's a lot of environmental issues. And what's happening is, um, is the islands are getting smaller and smaller. So there is much more of, 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 a, of, of, a, of a fight between man and, and, animals, yes. and animals because they are all fighting for the same space. So, um, you know, recent, I mean, not recent. And, I mean, and resources. Yeah, and also I think the tigers, are, this is, you know, the whole thing about man eating tigers, you know, and, and the whole link with the myth of, of Doc and Rai. But I think what's really fascinating is that actually, because the islands are um, shrinking, then the tigers are coming into the villages, and and you know the the tidal waves and and the death and you know the fact that they they basically have, I mean, you know, bodies that they can feed on, that they get a taste for human flesh, that they start going for easy prey. So there's a lot of conflict like that, but I think it's it's that thing of understanding of actually. We ourselves have to do a lot more to help with uh, global warming and issues like that because that's obviously having well, a big impact. Well, it on appears that, uh, that uh, you have done a good work and you have been able to convince the the Arts Council of e okay. England. Mm. But uh, to take it uh, beyond the shores of this country, I think you will need the support of uh, some higher arts councils, uh, probably UNESCO. Have yes, you thought about yeah. that? I mean. I think we would, I mean, we, we're getting in touch with as many people as possible and, and UNESCO would be one of the peop one of the organisations that we'll be getting in touch with. Um, we, we hope that there would be a platform t to allow the production to reach a wider audience, definitely. Inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you for having me. And it was a pleasure having you. Pleasure being Thank here. Thank you for being with us and I hope that you've enjoyed the show as much as we have and we hope that... Uh, as Lisa was giving you the list of dates, you will go and watch them. This is uh, very near to our heart, Sundarbans, and the biodiversity. We need a proper balance between nature and the activities of human beings. Thank you for being with us. Uh, next week, I won't be here. Uh, for one month of Ramadan, we are going to have the brick. And when we come back, we'll wish you the best of Eid. Have a blissful Ramadan and a happy Eid. Thank you.